Hey, how's it going, everyone? Uh, we've got a couple folks coming in, and I'm sure more will join momentarily. But welcome to this week's product webinar. Uh, I'm joined by Emily and Xuyang, who are two engineers at Roboflow, and they are going to show us dedicated deployments, which is a new way to host models and workflows on a uh, controlled cloud instance uh, just for you. So I'll kick it off to them. Sweet. Well, I can kick us off and give an introduction. Um, dedicated deployments, it lets you actually, rather than hitting the Roboflow hosted API, which all our users are using, lets it, it spins up um, dedicated compute just for you. Um, so it lets you actually run on GPU on more advanced hardware. And I'll give a demo of how that works. One second. So here's kind of a brief overview of what you can do. Um, we have two types of machines you can run. One is a CPU and one is a GPU. And we do have a CLI for actually deploying all the different things. Um, but I'll actually be showing you how to do it in the UI. Um, so if you haven't seen the workflow editor, this is the best way to kind of build all your complex computer vision logic, kind of looking to see what I have in my workspace. Um, you have the ability to actually quickly blur faces, um, do conditional branching, um, chain different models together so you can like find objects and then classify them. Um, what I'll actually be showing today is using SAM2, a segment anything model, to actually convert bounding boxes to polygons. And also I'll be implementing a small object detection workflow. So let's get started. Um, here by default, um, let me add an object detection model. And I'm actually going to be using the COCO model, which detects common objects. Um, and by default right now, I'm connected to the hosted API. You can always see this on the top left. If you actually go ahead and run a preview, I will be using my animal model. Um, by default, it returns the responses. Um, what I will actually be doing it so you can actually see what's happening. I will add some visualization steps. So this will actually be showing you the different predictions. Um, so now finally, you can see the visual. Here are the bounding boxes, and these are the bounding boxes with the labels. Um, for the dedicated deployments here, um, rather than calling the general hosted API, I'm actually going to spin up a GPU server here. I'm mean, going to just add my name. Um, and this is kind of all you need. You will um, spin up the deployment, and it takes anywhere for, um, from 1 to 10 minutes to actually make it ready. So while it's spinning up, I'll actually go ahead and configure my workflow a bit more. Um, so going back right now, I have my basic model, but I'm going to add the SAM2 block. Um, it actually only runs on GPU. Um, so this is why that dedicated deployments feature is really helpful. So you can actually play around with the latest models. And I'll go ahead and delete these other blocks and actually switch it to a polygon visualization. So I'll be able to draw the polygons. So finally, I'll add the labels. Um, so this workflow is now able to actually take in my object detection model, find the objects, convert them to polygons, and actually visualize them. And so going to run, as you can see here, I get an error that the hosted API doesn't support this model. Um, so it doesn't have GPU. So let's see once this spins up, then I can actually go ahead and show you it in action. Um, kind of giving a sneak peek of what's coming next. Um, right now, most of the blocks work on CPU, but we have a host of new models coming out. Um, as these large foundational models, um, there's some like Florence 2, which is a zero-shot object detection model, and it takes any prompt as input and can find pretty much any object in the image. And so well, as these more complex models are coming out, um, then you'll be actually able to build these pipelines without having to do much um, labeling yourself. Um, other cool stuff that's coming out on our radar, um, there's actually flex models where you're able to say, replace objects in my image with something else. And it lets you do generative AI as well. Um, cool. So this, my server is ready. So now I actually connect, can connect to it. And I have my workflow running on a GPU now. So when I run this preview, you can see here, it doesn't give an error anymore. And it's executing on a GPU. Um, the first time it runs, it actually takes a bit longer since it requires pulling the model weights onto the server. Um, after the first execution, it does run a bit faster. So let me try it one more time.
Well, so now you can see it was actually able to convert those bounding boxes you saw previously to polygon. Um, I'm going to build slightly more advanced workflow um, to show you the power of these models. So what I'll be doing is I will be building a SAHI to detect small objects. So this is really good for aerial imagery, satellite imagery, where you have a really large image and you're finding really small objects. So what you can do is actually tile the image into large of different segments, run prediction on those segments, and then actually stitch it back together. So that's what I'll be doing here. So first I'll slice the images. By default, it breaks it up into 640 by 640 chunks. And then I will run my object detection model. And so here I'll be using the same one to detect common objects. And right now, it by default takes the de um, input image, but I actually wanted to take the image slices. So to connect two blocks, um, the second block has to take the first one as input. So that's what I did there. And then finally, I'll be going and merging it back together. So these takes those predictions and stitches them back together on the original image. Um, and finally, let's add some visualizations. So I'll add the bounding boxes, and then I'll add the labels. So kind of to see what this does, I have a different image picked out, which is an aerial satellite imagery of a construction site. So let's run and see what happens here. And so one other thing to note is that our hosted API has a 10 second timeout and a lot of times it takes a bit longer to execute these complex flows. So by default, you can see here my basic model without being tiled um, only detects some of the objects. But if you actually see here, being able to breaking it up into chunks, it finds a lot more objects and we can scroll down and actually see the different labels here. Um, you can always tweak the model some more to get more predictions. So right now it's missing some people. Let's say I wanna tile it a bit more. So here, other than the 640 by 640, I'll switch it to 400 by 400. Um, and this will run a bit more predictions to make it more accurate. So now you can see it's picking up a lot more of these people. Um, one final thing, let's actually run SAM to segment all of these objects. So what I'll be doing is I will connect this to the output of the, um, I'll be using the bounding boxes from the stitch. Um, and then finally, let's add the polygon visualization. And yeah, happy to answer any questions at the end. Um, this will take a bit longer to run since now it's running um, the segment anything model on a bunch of tiles, um, but it's still going to return soon. So cool, this is the original model running. Um, this is the tiled model um, using bounding boxes. And then finally we have SAM2 connected. So it's actually able to put all the polygons on all the different shapes. And this is how you can chain logic together. Um, one final fun thing we can do is we can actually count the number of people detected. So I'll be using the property definition. Um, this is what it actually does is you can connect it to the output of one of the models. Um, so here I'll be connecting it to the segment anything model to count the number of objects. So I will be count. And then let me add it to the response. I'll add it to the box. Sweet. So So I built a workflow that found about 200 objects in my different image child. Um, so I'll hand it over to Shuying to talk about the differences in speed. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm going to show how the performance, how the latency uh, between using the hosted uh, API and dedicated uh, deployment. Here we have a very simple workflow. It only contains one object detection model. And then we have several visualization, for example, counting how many people here. And uh, let's run this, this test. So basically what it do is it will connecting uh, to the hosted API and this is the dedicated API. And then uh, we warm up the, uh, the, the server because we need to download the model weights. And then uh, we have five 
test image, and then we send the request to both the hosted one and dedicated one, and measure how many time does it take, and then we calculate average time. So here you can see for the hosted API server, it takes around, uh, yeah, and an average it's a one point seven, but yeah, sometimes it's longer, but sometimes it's uh, shorter. But dedicated one, it's a little bit more stable. It's uh, basically within zero point four a uh, second for the same model, same request. So uh, very excited to have this feature ready and feel free to test it. Thank you. Sweet. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Xu Yang. Um, let's break for questions now. Um, if you are shy, feel free to just throw them in the chat or send them to me via DM. Uh, if you're brave, feel free to just come off mute. Uh, and any questions you have, either about dedicated deployments specifically, or flows, or RoboFlow more generally. 